Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message. It's because of people like you that we are able to continue to reach with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. If you would like to give to our efforts or to Set Free Missions, visit setfree.cc slash give. Feel free to check out other great messages like this one on our website, setfree.cc, our Church Center app, or our Vimeo channel. If there's anything we can do to serve you, please feel free to contact us at 864-269-3620 or at hello at setfree.cc. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Now for the message, enjoy. Well, I'm glad to be back, and I, I've got a thought. It's a simple thought. I don't claim to have a deep theological message today, but I'm a simple-minded person, and what I get my mind on is what I'm going to go with. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's going to talk to us about some shark truths today. Say it. Say shark truths. You see, Don and I have been on vacation at the ocean, and, and one, one particular morning, uh, I just happened to look out, and about waist deep in the water, you know, at, at the beach where the, about waist deep out where the waves start to, whatever they do there, I saw a shark about, he was a big boy, he was six to seven foot tall, long, and I seen him come all the way down the beach, and his fin was up, and I watched that big nasty thing go all the way down the beach, and well, my mind is so simple that when I get to thinking on something, that's what I'll preach on. And so uh, I'm going to preach on, on sharks this morning. I read lately uh, that a lot of CEOs from Fortune 500 clubs, I say lately, it was a year or so ago I read this, a lot of CEOs from um, Fortune 500 clubs, they put like big aquariums in their office, like big six-foot and eight-foot aquariums. They'll put them in their office and... Uh, it's very popular for them. They'll bring in all kind of exotic fishes and put in these aquariums almost as trophies. They'll bring in brightly colored fish from uh, the Pacific Asian area and the Caribbean area. And they'll even pay five and ten thousands of dollars for certain fish to have in their office. So when you come in the CEO's office and you see that big aquarium with these very rare and very expensive fish, you realize this is an important man. He's got money floating around in the aquarium. But, but what really surprised me was, out of all the CEO's offices and the big aquariums and the expensive exotic fish, and the most popular thing that they would have in their aquariums was a hammerhead shark. And I thought, of all the fish, the brightly colored fish, the exotic fish, the most popular fish to put in a CEO's aquarium is a shark. And then, then my mind being simple like it is, I thought, well, now how in the world are you going to keep a shark in an aquarium? A six-foot to an eight-foot aquarium, you're going to put a shark in there. And I come across something that's called the uh, shark complex. And this is true. This is what, this is what I found out. You can take a, sh a hammerhead shark and put him in an aquarium, and he'll live his whole life in that aquarium, and he will fully mature physically, but he'll never grow past eight inches long. A hammerhead shark will maturely, mature physically, but he'll never get in size past eight inches long because he's in an aquarium, and you could take that same shark out of the aquarium and put him in the ocean, and he'll grow to seven or eight feet long. The shark complex. What happens is the shark never outgrows its environment. He's, the shark will stay proportionate in size to its surroundings. And he'll stay eight inches long because he's learning how to survive on a smaller scale because his surroundings tell him he has to live at a smaller scale. So that shark that could grow to eight feet in an ocean learns to live within its limitations because he can't be but so big because he has to have room to move around in that eight-foot, six-foot aquarium because a shark has to have a flow all the time. So he knows that 
he's got limitations and he can't grow past what his limitations are telling him. Has anybody ever felt like they stuck you in an aquarium? He learns to live within his limitations. Gideon, the angel said, you mighty man of valor, you're going to deliver Israel. And he said, you got your own person, see. He said, my family's the least one in the kingdom, and I'm the least one in the, in the family. And the angel of God didn't care what aquarium Gideon had been born into. He said, you mighty man of valor, you're going to deliver Israel. David went out that day. He had done been called, appointed, and anointed to be king, but he was still a little shepherd boy. And he goes out to the battle to check on his brothers. And, and his brothers look at him and say, Who are those few sheep? Who'd you leave those few sheep with? You little nothing. What are you doing out here? Did you come out here to cause trouble? We, we know who you are. You, you get back in your aquarium. You can't grow past your eight inches. You're just a little sheep tender. You, David said, I come in the name of the Lord Jesus. I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. If you're not careful, life and family and circumstances will tell you who you are, what you can achieve, and don't expect to go past any of that. Have you ever had the aquarium of life that you was born into want to limit you. Y'all need this all I got. Y'all gonna have to help me. I've been looking at sharks. So. <laughs> Here's what I come to understand. Our outlook is not determined by what surrounds us, and our circumstance do not dictate our possibilities. Let me say it again. My circumstance and my past do not control my possibilities and my future. I'm, I, I, it does not matter what aquarium you were born into. It does not matter what kind of a murky, muddy aquarium you let yourself fall into. We are those people to whom God said all things are possible to him that believeth. I just believe, God, that I'm going to be bigger than an eight-inch shark. I'm going to get in an ocean and grow to my full stature. <laughs> Listen, I want to read you this, this verse of Scripture. Psalms 115. Listen to this right here. Psalms 115. And in and, 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 uh, Psalms 115 and verse 3 says, But our God is in heaven, and He hath done whatsoever He's pleased. God don't care if you was born downtown Manhattan, if you was born in West Greenville, if you was born on the wrong side of the tracks, if you was born over on Judson Mill. I, I, Dad raised me in a place called Gobbler's Knob on the edge of Judson Mill. God don't care where you at. When He pleases to do something in your life, it's going to happen because He sits in heaven and He does whatever He pleases. And some of y'all need to look at yourself and say, Seth, you're not going to think about where you come from, what you've done, what your mistakes were anymore. You're going to get up out of the aquarium that you've been swimming in and you're going to grow. That same Psalms in verse, 11, verse uh, 12 says, the, the, listen to this, whatever aquarium you've been in says this, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear Him, both small and great. He'll bless that little shark that was dropped in an aquarium, and he'll bless that shark that's swimming in the ocean. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord which made the heaven and the earth. I come by to tell you today, it's time to get up out of the aquarium that's been holding you, and it's time for you to declare, the Lord will bless me. The Lord will increase me. He'll bless me more and more, and he'll bless my children more and more, and my future is brighter than my eyes can look into and I'm blessed never ever settle for the present aquarium that life has shoved you off into I'm not 
some devil's trophy in an aquarium that he wants to say, look what I can do with this one. Look how I can limit this one from growing. Romans chapter 4, watch this. Go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And we're going to start with around verse. The latter part of verse 17 says, God calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calleth those things that I'm talking to you about growing past your present aquarium lifestyle. He calleth those things that be not as though they were. Have you ever thought about asking some things that be not? Why not? Let me say that again because it just went. Have you ever thought about asking some things that be not? Well, why not? Look at that. Look, look on in that. Look on in that in that chapter in verse eighteen. Talking about Abraham said, "Who against hope believed in hope, when there was no reason to have any hope." He had hope anyway. Who against hope believed in hope. The latter part of that verse says, according to that which was spoken. He had hope in that which was spoken anyway. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you just got to think bigger than what you've been thinking. Sometimes you got to look at where life has got you, and you got to say this to it. You got to say, listen here, things that were not, why not? I'm, I'm going to believe, I'm fully persuaded. I'm going to hope against hope. It's, it, it seems silly for me to hope that anything in my life's going to change right now, but I'm going to begin to think bigger than this small aquarium that I've been stuck in. I'm going to begin to think bigger than this small life that I've been living in. Can't, never could, and ain't, never would. If I'm going to get out of this aquarium I've got to destroy the prevailing attitude that has been shoved off on me. You have to, I'm going to say that again. You have to destroy the prevailing attitude. That means the mindset that has been pushed off on you. The Wright brothers' daddy was a Methodist preacher. He was a circuit preacher, and he was a uh, he would preach to the state conferences for the Methodist church. And and when everyone was beginning to to, to play around with the idea of flight, and they were making all these crazy kind of these first airplanes. You know, some airplanes the wings would do this, and some that some they had guys sitting in and pedaling motors and all kind of stuff. And the Wright brothers' daddy got up in a state convention at a Methodist state convention and he said, this is ridiculous. If God had wanted the man to fly, he'd have created him with wings on him. But they wasn't going to live in that aquarium. The Chicago, Chicago Tribune editorial page in 1899 when we were first, first, men were first beginning to create uh, what they called the horseless carriage, begin to create cars, and they were playing around. It was before, it was before Henry Ford started the uh, assembly line for the Ford Model A in eight, the early, about 1904. But in 1899, the Chicago, Chicago Tribune put out an editorial, and they said, the horse is here to stay, and the automobile is only a novelty. How many of y'all rode a horse to church today? I did. I rode 450 of them to church today. <laughs> Are you tired of the aquarium you're living in? You ready to beat the shark complex? Let me tell you a few things about sharks. A shark has a bigger potential on the inside of him than the aquarium that he's been dropped into. He was built to live in more. He was built, you drop a shark in an aquarium, he was built to live in more. Let me challenge you. Can't you think out past your present circumstances? Can you begin to challenge the norms that's in your life? And can you begin to say, you know what? 
God is able to do all things. God can do exceedingly abundantly beyond what I can ask or think. Why am I living in this small aquarium? Why am I living in this small life? Why don't I believe God? Zechariah, uh, I'm, I'm just going to turn there quickly. Zechariah chapter 4 and, and, and verse 10, he says, For who hath despised the day of small, despised the day of small things? Who hath despised the day of small things? And then if you go over to Job chapter 8, listen to this. Job chapter 8 and um, uh, verse 7, Job chapter 8 and verse 7 says, Though thy beginning, little shark, in a small aquarium, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. I'm not stuck where I'm at in life right now. How about you? Listen, I found another translation today. I got this little app on my phone. It gives me all these translations. And I'm a King James guy, but this one is so good, I had to say it. King James says, says that um, though thy beginning was small, your latter end should greatly increase. Another, another uh, translation says, listen, though your former was ordinary, your future will be extraordinary. Hey, though your former life's been ordinary, your future's going to be extraordinary. How many of you is ready to get up out of a little old bitty aquarium and swim in the ocean like you was created to do? <laughs> extraordinary. I love that. That, that, just, that thrills me. That floats my boat. That wets my shoes. I have... Y'all got to go... That's all I got, y'all. I'm on a beach with a short thing. <laughs> I, I have learned... That what others think about me is not near as important as what I think about myself. Amen. Because I can limit my future right here. They believe that, oftentimes, they believe that I and you, that we were created to live small. But I believe that we're created for more than this. And you have to be careful because... Your, your Bible in Proverbs says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to be careful to not get a shark complex and accept certain things in life and say, this is my story, this is where I'm at, I'm stuck right here. You have to be careful because a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. A shark has greater possibilities on the inside of him than that aquarium he's stuck on the inside of. You've got good things in your heart. There's things that God deposited inside of you. We have this treasure of wealth. We have this deposit on the inside of our spirits. He's deposited in us. There's things in us that we can get out of us and begin to live in that we ain't even dreamed about. Why don't we start to dream about the goodness of God? My God, it's the Holy Ghost that created everything that moved on the inside of you. It's the Word of God that spoke the whole universe into existence that took a bolt inside of you why we won't live small and be a little lady hammerhead shark? Stop being a little hammerhead. Life might put life might try to put you in a little aquarium, but you got to tell yourself, I'm not going in there. I was created to live in an ocean. I'm created to live in an ocean of God's goodness. You're not going to give me just a little bit of water. You're not going to give me 10 gallons of water to swim around here. When God created me to swim in the Atlantic Ocean full of anointing and blessings and goodness, my God, I feel like I want to preach. Your circumstances right now in the present may seem small. But I come by to tell you that we were created to live large. Psalms chapter 31, I'm going to read it to you. Psalms 31, and look at verse, uh, the latter part of verse 7 says, Thou hast known my soul in adversities. You've known my soul in adversities. Verse 8 says, You have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Here we go. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. 
I'm believing God to live large. Psalms 18. Look at Psalms 18. Set my feet, God, in a large room. Psalms 18. Look at verse 17 and 19. Verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy. He got me up past what I was born into. He got me up past what I fell into. He got me up past a little six-foot aquarium. He got me past what I was into. He delivered me from a strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Don and I was walking down the, 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 the Main Street little beach area there, and there were some old dudes about my age sitting out in front of a bar room playing guitars and singing evil song. What was the song they were singing, Donna? Take it easy, take it easy. Don't let the sound of your own mind drive you crazy. And we're walking down through there, and Donna says, you could have been a, beach, a good beach bum. I said, prophesy, girl. No. <laughs> and my mind went back to, yeah, I sp- yeah, in my early years, I spent whole summers around beaches playing in rock band. And I, and I, could, I could have still been here and still doing that. And I, and I started thinking, alcohol addiction and drug addiction and rock and roll music and traveling and doing everything I was doing, it was too strong for me. I was stuck in that aquarium. But the hand of God delivered me from my enemies. He delivered you from your enemies. And he pulled us up. And now, and now, when, now when my wife and I are on, on a beach and we walk by a little beer joint with people out on the sidewalk singing the Eagles, I, instead of me being bound up and looking for a job to play in a bar room somewhere, I walked by the beach, called of God, anointed of God, pastor in a church, got a ministry to tend to with my wife blessed and my children blessed and my grandchildren blessed. I, I don't have to get stuck in that stuff. Somebody needs to shake yourself and say, I'm not going back into no small aquarium. I'm not going to let the devil limit me. I'm not going to be stuck in some tale that he wants to tell me. God took me out of a small place and set my feet in a large room and I'm going to live in a big blessing. I and you were not created to live in a tank. We were not created to live in disease, but we were created to live in healing. We were not created to live in poverty, but we were created to live in prosperity. We were not created to live in fear, but we were created to walk in faith. We were not created to have depression. We were created to have dominion. We were not created to live in pain. We were created to live in promise. Take about 30 seconds. If you're going to get up out of the aquarium you've been in and give God a praise, you can stand to your feet and give Him a praise if you want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to live an 8-inch life when I can live an 8-foot life. All right, listen. Listen, listen, listen. I thought about a lady. I thought about a lady that life had stuck her in an aquarium. Twelve long years this lady had an issue of blood. And her circumstance, her aquarium said to her, you're not going past this. This is what's hit you in life. This is your story. And you're not going to get past. Have you ever had life tell you, you're not going to get past this thing you're dealing with. Who's ever had life tell you, uh-oh, we just took a turn and it's not going to get any better. That life's, life will do that. Yeah. But she understood how to get out of the tank. Because your Bible says, you know the story, she pressed her way through. And she said within herself, if I can touch him, I'll be made whole. Watch them. She said within herself, I want to show you how to get out of a tank. If you trap a little, little bit of hammerhead, if you trap, let me show you how to quit being a hammerhead. She said within herself. And the Greek, the Greek, the Greek translate this way. She said and kept saying. And she kept saying to herself till it got inside of her. Because, see, you got a little, the, the little sharky's got more on the inside of him than the aquarium he's living in. 
And, and she said and kept saying to herself till it got inside of her. She kept saying till it got inside of her. Let's listen, if you're in a little tank and you're limited by that little tank, what you got to have is a change of the atmosphere. You can't grow past the atmosphere that that little tank, that little aquarium's got you in. So you got to change the atmosphere. If you're going to change the atmosphere, you, but the, you, you, you got to learn to say it and keep saying it till it gets on the inside of you. You got to learn to when you got to get this in you so much that when the devil squeezes you, you burp John. 3.16. When you sneeze, you sneeze. He hath delivered me from the powers of darkness. She said, and she kept saying within herself, I tell you, I'm not looking at the aquarium anymore. I'm looking at the ocean. And she said within herself, she said within herself, something on the inside of me wants to say, I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. If God be for us, who can be against us? Be not afraid or dismayed. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through Christ Jesus. He always causes us to triumph. She said within herself, and she kept saying within herself, and she kept saying it till it got to be who she was. And she kept talking that vision till that vision started to come to pass. And she didn't have a dream, and it passed. She kept talking that dream. I'm going to be well. I'm going to be whole. I done spent everything I, I had. I done done all I could do. I done been to every doctor I could go to. Can't nobody help me anyway but Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep saying to myself, when I touch him, I'm going to be healed. He's going to heal me. He's going to deliver me. He's going to promote me. He's going to prosper me. He's going to make my dream come to pass. And when you feel like quitting, you'll find that there's something on the inside of you like old Jeremiah said. He said, I thought I was going to quit, but it felt like something fire was shut up in my bone. When you feel like David and you come down and the, and the enemy jumps up in your face and your giants start to scream at you, first thing you'll know, it'll pop up out your spirit. You come with me with a sword and a spirit, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. If it's going to be a fight, then we're going to fight, but I'm going to get up out of this little crowd. Where are you? Psalm chapter 16, verse 12 says, Through God we shall do valiantly. He it is that shall tread down our enemies. I don't even have to fight it. He it is, Sherrod. He will tread down my enemy. I don't even have to fight that devil. God, through God, I will do valiantly because He will tread down my enemies. And whatever it is I'm facing, it's one of y'all's favorite scriptures. You know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Whatever you're going through right now, the pro God is the God of the process. And when He gets through with the process, He'll stand, bring you into the promise every time it happens that way. Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Sometimes when you spend the day in a small aquarium, it's hard and you don't know if you're going to make it, but you got to tell yourself, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. If disease, if discouragement, if depression's got you hemmed up in a little aquarium, let me give you some good advice. All you got to do is get through one day at a time. You don't worry about next week. You don't worry about next year. You just tell yourself, I've got the victory for today. And I'll let tomorrow take care of itself. I can do all things through Christ today. I can handle whatever I got to deal with today. For the Lord your God, He it is that goeth with you to fight against your enemy to save you. It's not you, for it's the Lord your God. He it is that goes with you to fight against your enemy to save you. Quit settling for an aquarium life. You were created to live in ocean possibilities. Let me flip that thing about sharks because cause I'm looking at sharks at the ocean and I'm thinking about all that stuff that I just told you. And then I thought, but sharks bite. What if I'm in the ocean and I get up under a shark? Listen, a, a pastor friend of ours suggested to Don and I go to this. We went to New Smyrna Beach. That's where we went. Suggested we go to New Smyrna Beach. Y'all remember Pastor Isaac Walker out of Cleveland, Tennessee? How many of you remember him? That's where he said to go. We paid for our rooms months ago and rented them. And I got on to Google just about three weeks before we went down there, and it said that New Smyrna Beach, where we was going, was the most shark infested and had more shark attacks of anywhere in the whole world. Hey, David, I just saw you. Had more shark attacks than anywhere in the whole world right where we're going. 
I looked at Don and I said, we're not going in the water. <laughs> and I, I'd get up in the morning drinking my coffee and look out the back door and I'd see these surfing boys. With these surfing boys. They'd be out there in water that deep. You know, they look like the Malibu, California. They got the pretty curly blonde hair. You can see their chest up like this. <laughs> and they're out there swimming in the most more shark bites in, off that coast than anywhere else in the world. And I would drink my coffee and look at them and go, stupid, you stupid. <laughs> really, I was drinking my coffee waiting to see if one of them, I told Donna, I'd like to see one of them idiots get bit out here. <laughs> I really wouldn't, but I was thinking. <laughs> so I started thinking about sharks, the shark complex. There's one thing we got to watch out is for the shark complex. Don't let, don't let, Somebody stick you in a small aquarium. But here's another thing about sharks. I start thinking about if if a shark attacks you. Because I wasn't going to get in the water, but if you attack one of them guys that's in the water, a shark attacks you. So I I went back and studied some things. Here's what I found out. I know y'all, some of y'all are just thinking if you went to the mountains, you'd be preaching on bears, wouldn't you? (laughs) I might would have (laughs) been. But but here's what I found out about sharks. This is true. This, y'all behave. This is really true. A shark can feel fear. Oh, this is where I'm about to go. So what you're talking about, a shark can fear fear. Sharks have a, a, a something in them. They can, they can pick up electromagnetic fields in the water. You, I, I read where a shark for two or three miles out, you can take a nine-volt transistor radio type battery, a little square nine volt battery, and drop it out in the middle of the ocean, and sharks will start to circle it for two or three miles out because they can feel the electronic magnetic impulses that are coming up off of that battery out in the middle of the ocean. When a shark comes up on you in the water, if you freak out and you get full of fear and your heart rate goes up, then your heart rate starts sending those electronic magnetic impulses. That's how they put you on an EKG and check you out. You, you're putting out magnetic impulses. And that shark can feel that you're full of fear. And when he might not would have attacked you, he will attack you because he knows you're full of fear. And Job said, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. You want me to tell you, I'm, I'm using analogies, I understand. Y'all go with me, I'm talking in analogies. But you want me to tell you how not to get shark bit? Don't send off them electronic pulses that I'm full of fear. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Listen, fear is a magnet. And it'll pull, it'll pull a demon in on top of you. you because here's, how, here's what you do with your mouth when you get full of fear. You start to talk your fear. And you start to say, hello, Lord God, everybody's getting that COVID. I'll be the first one to get it. They're going to have a layoff down at the plant. I know they're going to get me. I'll be, one, I'll be in the first bunch to lay off. Ray, y'all remember Ray Riddle? Ray Riddle, he, he told me, he said, hey, during the Vietnam, he, he and I were the Vietnam War age, right? I missed it, but he got drafted. He, he said, the very first draft, he said, I'm sitting at home. If you old enough to remember, you young people won't remember. But on 6 o'clock news, they'd pull, they'd, they'd like, a, like a gambling thing, they'd pull numbers, and this was your draft. If your number was that, the one they pulled using the first draft. He said, that the very first one for Vietnam, he's sitting on the couch, and they're fixing to do it, and he said, he says to himself, they're going to get me as sure as the world. And guess what happened? They pulled his number. <laughs> hey, Ray, if you're watching, you know it's the truth. They pulled his number. You know why that happens like that? Because sharks can feel fear. And if you let the devil get you afraid of something, at what point in our lives did we think, dear God, I'm losing my hair? <laughs> And it happened. (laughs) 
<laughs> Here's what I want to say to the devil. My faith does not fear your fear, but your fear, but a fear of my faith. You say it again. My faith does not fear the devil's fear, but the devil's fear better learn to fear my faith. Because who is he that overcometh, but he that believeth? And who is he that believeth, but he that's born of the Son of God? Every one of us are overcomers. So here's another thing about sharks. If you don't want to be in a shark attack, don't get full of fear. And here's another thing about sharks. Don't swim in the dark. Because I didn't know this until I started studying sharks this week. Sharks mainly love to attack in the dark. They attack in the dark way more than they attack in the daylight. Don't swim in the dark. Read your Bible. Because any area of your life where there's darkness, if a thief's going to steal, he's more than likely to steal in the dark. That's why we put up street lights and stuff at night. So we can put light where dark is. If a thief's going to steal, he's going to steal in the dark. Any area of your life that you don't have the light on, the entrance of thy word bring a flight. The entrance of your word gives light. If, if a devil's going to steal from you, it's going to be something that you don't have the light on. It's going to be something that you don't understand. That's why a lot of people today are sitting in churches all across America, denominational churches, where they tell them that miracles have ceased and God don't baptize in the Holy Ghost anymore. And you can't believe God for a miracle and you can't believe God for the gifts of the Spirit and you can't believe God for this and you can't believe God for that because they're in areas of darkness they haven't shined the light on. But all they got to do is get Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 and they say, and they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave to us. All they got to do is read Mark 16 and 16. For these signs shall follow them to believe. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up service and they won't harm them. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. This, this is, this shine the light. If you want to get shark a bit, if you want to get attacked by a shark, just get into some areas of darkness. And you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is just continue to be dumb and not read your Bible and he'll eat your lunch every time. He'll eat your lunch every time. Every time. Here's another little thought. If you ever find yourself in it, in it and you realize it's imminent, you're about to be attacked by a shark. It's about to happen. It's about to go down. Here's what the websites that I studied said. Said the best thing to do if you're going to be attacked by a shark is keep eye contact. Look him dead in the eyes. They say never turn your back on a shark. And I would say to you, you can't ignore a devil. If he's up in your house, he's in your family, he's in your kids, he, you cannot turn your back on it. But keep eye contact. And, here, and here's the thing they said about a shark. If, if the attack's going down, it's imminent. Sharks, um, how can I say it? Sharks respect authority. And if you act like you're not scared of them, and if you look them in the eye and you bow up on them, you might dwarf the attack. And here's the thing. If you feel that an attack is imminent, they said do this. Do not turn and run. You can't outswim a shark. A shark will swim 15 to 20 miles an hour is what, what I just read. And the best, the best a man can do if he's really good is about 5 miles an hour. You cannot outswim a shark. But if you're about to be under the, in a shark attack, here's what all the experts say. Hit him right in the nose and gouge your fingers right in his eye. Let me tell you, if you're about to be under a shark attack, hit him right in the nose and gouge your fingers right in his eye. If you're about to be under a shark attack, why don't you quiet yourselves like men? Why don't you fight like men? Having done all the stand, stand therefore and fight like a man. If you're about to be under a shark attack, James said, just resist the devil and he'll flee from you. If it's going to come down, it's going to come down. And there ain't, there ain't no sense in you whining. There ain't no sense in you turning your back. There ain't no sense in you crying. There ain't no sense in you saying, oh Lord, let 
let me run, let me get away from here. If it's going to come down, it's going to come down. But I got good news for you. It's a fixed fight because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. What's that mean? Just stand up and go, oh, please, Mr. Devil, I resist you. You go away. No, that ain't what it means. You can go, I resist you and you go away and he'll eat your lunch every time if, you, if you're still living in darkness. But the word resist the devil in the Greek means for you to appoint a covenant and oppose him through conversation. This is what it means. And lay him flat on his back. Appoint a covenant and oppose him through conversation and lay him flat on the back. Here's how you resist the devil. You appoint a covenant. When it looks like a shark's trying to attack you, you jump, if it's a sickness he's attacking you with, you jump up and you grab a covenant. And you say, let me tell you what we're going to talk about, Mr. Devil. By his stripes I am healed. I shall live and shall not die, and I shall proclaim the glory of God. Let me tell you, you think you're going to put poverty on me? He said that because I'm a giver, because I'm a tither, I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. Now, I might have a rough day every once in a while, but blessing's coming, and I'll live in it for so you oppose the devil, you, you resist the devil. And it says, if you resist him, he will flee for you. If you grab a shark by the eye and put your finger in it, that shark's going to get gone like crying like a little baby. You need to stand up sometime, look the devil in the face and say, let me tell you something. In the name of Jesus, the name is above every other name. In the blood of Jesus, I come against you. By the word of the living God, I take authority over you. And by the anointing of God, I destroy this yoke off my life. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Fight if you get shark bit. And here's the thing. If you don't fight, you're going to die. Oh, God, this is yours. You better hit him in the nose as hard as you can. Oh, pray for me. The devil's attacking my family. Shut your whining up. Get a Bible and fast and pray. And tell the devil, if hell's going to break loose, it's going to be on you, not on me. Let me, let me, I'll be through, but let me flip the analogy and we'll be out of here. Flip the analogy just a minute, but it's the same thought. I thought about those... The Israelites, as they were going into Canaan. And you know, started sending the, the 12 spies, and two of them believed God, and two of them came back. I mean, 10 of them came back. And, and, and here's what they said they said, We saw giants. And, and they, they said it in Numbers 13, they said, And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were to them. We saw giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. The Hebrew says, we envisioned ourselves. We, we envisioned them as giants. And we envisioned ourselves as little insignificant grasshoppers. And then it says, and so we were. We envisioned ourselves, and so we were. What's your vision for the future? Do you even have a vision for the future? You're just trying not to get shark bit. We envisioned ourselves. And so we're, and you know that story goes on. I, I want to I hear a couple of things in here. They saw themselves. Listen to me. They saw themselves next to the problem. They didn't see the problem next to their God. They saw themselves next to the problem. And here's what I have found out in serving God a long time now. Here's what I found out. That the devil will present a scenario to you. And he'll present a problem to you. And he'll present defeat in your life. Knowing that he don't have authority to give it to you. But he wants to see if you'll own it. And if you'll accept it and own it then he'll agree with you and solidify it in your life. We envisioned ourselves as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. He presents stuff. He, he's a master at presenting stuff to you to see if you'll get in fear and own it. 
And then once you get in fear, start talking it and let go of your dream and let go of your vision and let go of your victory, then he'll solidify that thing in your life. And see, and here's the thing. God eventually and people will begin to treat you just like you talk about you because God can't go past what you're saying. Because you eat the fruit of your lips, right? God, what, what? In Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28, God finally, got, God finally got sick of these unbelieving Jews. And in verse 28, and God said, Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. As truly as I live, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do with you. If all you're going to talk is doubt and um, when you talk in doubt and unbelief, you are almost insulting the Holy Ghost. I got a Bible that says I'm more than a conqueror, but I can't get victory over this. I got a Bible that says He healeth all my diseases, but I'm planning on dying from this disease. After a while, God will say, well, just what you're saying is what I'm going to do to you. But the good part about that, Robin, is just what I'm saying is what he's going to do to me. And I'm going to eat the fruit of my lips. And I'm going to tell you, I've had at times when it would look stupid for me to say, we're going to have this victory. When it looked ridiculous for me to say, I'm going to live and not die, and God's going to heal me from this disease. And when all the doctors reports and everything was saying you're a dead man but I would say bless the Lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless his holy name he heals me of all my diseases he forgives me of all my iniquities he restores my life and I use my strength as an eagle he satisfies my mouth with good things sometimes if you'll say it enough God will say oh, you know what I'm going to do for you what you're saying <laughs> hey Barbara I've been missing you sweet lady I'm going to do for you what you're saying. Now watch this. Here's where we mess up. That story of them, them guys in the, in the, uh, going into the promised land. If you look in 13 and 27, these spies came back. Now go with me. I know I've been talking about sharks, but this is the same principle. They came back and, and they told him and said, listen to the report they brought back. We came into the land where you sent us, and surely... It floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit thereof. My God, there's a wire making a noise somewhere. Somebody wiggle a wire and stop it. A piano or a guitar or something. I'm sorry, y'all. That's a curse that I got from doing that all them years. It says, uh, it says, they said, surely it's just like you told us. It's just like you told us. Verse 28 says, but nevertheless... The people are strong that dwell in that land. The cities are walled and very great. And we saw the children of Anak there. We saw giants there. Here's the point I'm making. If we're not careful, they said, it's just like you said, but there's these problems there. If we're not careful, we can mentally agree with the word, but circumstantially talk ourselves out of its benefits. Let me say that again. We can mentally agree with the word and know that it's true. But we can begin to look at the opposition and not the opportunity. These people focused on the obstacles rather than the oracles of God. These people were opposition-minded rather than opportunity-minded. Are you opposition-minded or are you opportunity-minded? They were in the No We Can't Club. I want to be in the Yes We Can Club. Because all the promises of God are in Him. Yea and Amen. Are you in the No We Can't Club? Are you in the Stick Me in a Small Aquarium and I'll Grow to Eight Inches Club? Or are you in the Put Me in the Ocean where I was created to live? Put Me in the Ocean. This morning, are you ready for change in your life? Are you ready for change? Is this the year that you believe in God?
to finally live in what he's promised you? Or are you happy to stay in a little aquarium? Not me. Kelly, I want it all. I want it all. I don't know what the ocean holds. Oftentimes I've been hemmed up in a little aquarium, but I want to get out there and find what it holds. I want to see what God has. I want to live in what He's provided. You know, I think my, one of my greatest fears is I get to heaven and I say, God, I want to thank you for what you did in my life. And Him look at me and go, Psh. I would have done so much more if you just believed me. I was willing to do so much more. But I'm glad you enjoyed that little life you lived. I don't want to be small-minded and live a small life. I want to live in an ocean of blessing, ocean of goodness. Everybody's heads bowed and every eyes closed for just a moment. you in here and you say, Pastor Steve, I, I, either I, I need to get saved, I need to even get, I need to, I need to get right with God. Or you say, I, I have accepted what life has dealt me, and I've just come to adjust to living in a small life. And I'm ready for God to do bigger things in my life. Raise your hand if you say, I either want Jesus or I'm ready for bigger things in my life. See, every hand in here ought to go up about bigger things in my life. I'm ready. They're going to sing that song, and I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands this way right now. If you're in here and, you're right, and, you're, and your life's not right with God, right now I'm going to pray. I want everybody in here to pray with me. Everybody in here to say these words with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I'm sorry for myself. I need your mercy. I need you to come live in me. I need you to come live in me. Today I will accept Jesus. I will surrender. I will surrender. I make him my Lord. Make him my Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me in my weakness. Help me in my weakness. Help my wrong thoughts. Help me where my flesh has me. But I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And I know, I know, according to your word, I'm saved. I'm not perfect, but I'm saved. Help me, Jesus. Now I want everybody to make this your decree. Say this loud and say it proud. Say, I'm done with the aquarium. I'm done with the aquarium. I'm living in an ocean. I'm living in an ocean. I'm moving in an ocean. I'm moving in an ocean. There's an ocean of mercy. An ocean of blessing. An ocean of goodness. 